Hello, and welcome back to In today's episode, we're looking at white phosphorus. White phosphorus has a big reputation for being a horrible chemical, and we're gonna see today whether that reputation is valid, or whether perhaps white phosphorus is being misrepresented, and it's really not as bad as what people think it is. The biggest property of white phosphorus is that it's pyrophoric, so it ignites on contact with air without any sort of external heat needed. But it also has another property, which people sort of forget about, and that's its toxicity. White phosphorus has a lethal doses of about one milligram per kilogram of body weight, which puts it as more toxic than sodium azide and cyanide. So it is a really poisonous chemical. In addition, it's had quite a run in the law because it's banned as a chemical weapon and also as a drug precursor. So all up, it is the most flammable, most toxic and most illegal chemical that I currently own. Nice. Phosphorus mainly comes in two allotropes. There are more, but they don't really count that much. So there's white phosphorus and there's red phosphorus. Now, I could show you myself how to synthesize white phosphorus from red phosphorus, but it's a little dangerous. So I thought we'd rather look at a fellow YouTuber doing this synthesis, a real professional showing us how to really synthesize this incredibly lethal substance. Gonna take a pack of safety matches, remove the tray, then using a pair of scissors, cut off the striker. Yeah. Then we need to peel the striker off the cardboard backing and fold it in half. Yeah. Once the plate is nice and cold, plate. set fire to the striker and place it on the plate like this. And then we're heating the uh, red phosphorus to make white phosphorus. Yeah, this is fine. This is good. Do this in a well-ventilated area and don't breathe in any fumes. Yeah. Once it's all burned, move the ash to one side. It's this brown residue we're after. Yeah, that's the white phosphorus. Wipe some on your fingertip. What the fuck? and slowly rub your fingers together. What? You'll soon start to generate smoke. What? Magic is real, kids. It's just very, very poisonous. All right, uh, m moving on. White phosphorus is stored under water, which it doesn't react with, and it stops it reacting with oxygen in the air and bursting into flames, which is good. It's a waxy solid, but it's not really that soft, so it can be quite hard to cut. So I find it's easier just to melt the bulk solid underneath water. Seeing as the melting point is only about 44 degrees, you can do it under a stream of hot water. The only catch, of course, is that now you have to deal with molten white phosphorus, which is more dangerous and more reactive than the solid form, but it's fine because I'm a professional. But if you do it right, you end up with some nice small little bits of white phosphorus which are a lot easier to work with than what I'm going to use for the rest of the video. A good question to ask here is why is it called white phosphorus when it's so yellow? The yellowing actually occurs on exposure to UV light and it's actually converting into red phosphorus. It takes quite a lot of UV light for this conversion to happen, but it's good because I live in an area where the ozone layer is fucked and clouds haven't been invented yet. So we have more than enough UV light to convert quite a lot of this white phosphorus into red phosphorus. This is a time lapse over a day, and we can see that, well, it doesn't really get on the inside of phosphorus, but the outside is coated in this red layer of red phosphorus. And then when we take it out of the water, we can see it smokes a lot less than it ordinarily would because that red phosphorus layer is stopping the white phosphorus on the inside from oxidizing. But anyway, this is fucking explosions and fire. Why have there been no fucking explosions or fire yet? Let's get on with it. Why is phosphorus a banned chemical weapon? And also, why is it used in every single military conflict that's going on around the world currently? There are five properties why a phosphorus fire is worse than an ordinary fire. Let's start with the obvious property. White phosphorus ignites on contact with air. It's pyrophoric. And this is why it's banned, because there's a Geneva Convention that's signed by pretty much every country that bans the use of incendiary weapons in war. Understandably, people don't like being set on fire. I know it's war, but fire in war, not the greatest option. Like most UN conventions, everyone sort of agrees it's a good idea until one of the countries decides that they're just going to violate it anyway and no one can stop them, so they just do it and all the other countries are just kind of like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. But in general, it's a good idea that no country should use incendiary weapons and white phosphorus is definitely an incendiary weapon. The pyrophoric nature of white phosphorus also makes it really difficult to extinguish. So this is another reason the fire is really bad, because even if you smother it or you douse it with water, once you remove the covering or the water dries up, the fires can just start again. You basically have to let it burn out. This is, <laughs> unless you have some specialist chemicals to sort of 
do something with the white phosphorus. Even if you dissolve it, it's going to reignite later on. So you, you're really stuffed. All right, onto the second really bad thing about white phosphorus fires. They're sticky. The white phosphorus melts at 44 degrees, which is much lower than the temperature that it burns at. It's really still a thick liquid. So if you touch a white phosphorus fire with something, some white phosphorus will get transferred with that. A lot different than most liquid fuels in the fact that it's like a sticky fire, which is not great for people. I'm towing the line here. This video is going to get deleted by YouTube anyway, so like fuck it, but you know, you know what I mean. Thirdly, white phosphorus fires are really quite aggressive. They tend to spit. I don't know what causes white phosphorus fires to spit like they do, but I have a feeling it's its low boiling point. So white phosphorus boils at 280 degrees Celsius. It'll burn and then all of a sudden it'll spontaneously boil and that throws out burning phosphorus. It spits the fire and can ignite away from the actual initial fire, which is not a huge deal on this like, you know, couple milligram scales, but you can imagine a large amount of white phosphorus can really explode. fourth reason white phosphorus fires are really bad is despite the really aggressive sort of spitting nature of the phosphorus fires, they still burn for a long period of time. So this is a very small lump of phosphorus here and you can imagine if it was like a thermite or even a like not really a flash powder that's not really comparable like a thermite or even like another fuel you would expect it to burn really fast but this phosphorus fire is still going you can see how long it takes for this tiny amount to, to fizzle out so if it was a large amount of phosphorus you can imagine it would burn for so long and there's nothing you can really do about extinguishing it like I said before because even if you smother it you have the issue because it's going to reignite later on Lastly, we get to the so-called official reason that white phosphorus is still used in every single conflict around the world currently, and that is smoke grenades. White phosphorus produces a lot of smoke when it burns. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the big ones is the fact that it makes an oxide, phosphorus pentoxide, which is P2O5. So there's five atoms of oxygen for two atoms of phosphorus. Most elements use like two or less, but phosphorus uses two and a half atoms of oxygen. Not that you can have half an atom of oxygen, but you know, the math checks out. That means you can get a lot of oxide for a small amount of actual phosphorus atoms. Also, the oxide is extremely hygroscopic. So it'll pull water from the atmosphere and then it makes droplets of phosphoric acid which is also very good at producing a smoke screen as well as the oxide. However, the same reaction where the oxide reacts with water in the air to produce phosphoric acid, that's the same thing that goes on when you breathe it in. It produces phosphoric acid in your lungs and also on your eyes it will produce phosphoric acid. So it's intensely irritating. So there's a lot of talk always about how a military force will use white phosphorus to flush out people that are hiding in a certain area by putting out smoke breathing in that smoke is very very painful and irritating you got to remember that there's that whole other <laughs> side to it and we come to the final reason I'm not sure what number we're up to but the final reason white phosphorus is the worst thing is its toxicity because even if you survive the smoke that's producing phosphoric acid in your lungs and in your eyes and the horrific fires that you can't put out that are spitting you know sticky globs of fire everywhere it's still poison you there's no antidote to white phosphorus poisoning so even if you seek medical attention after getting a white phosphorus burn on you you can still die there's nothing to prevent you dying from it anyway how about we just forget about war for the rest of the video and just do some fun demos, all right? Can, you think we can do that? The usual demo for white phosphorus involves dissolving it in carbon disulfide, but come on, who has carbon disulfide, all right? Make your experiments more accessible for the home science person in the modern era, all right? Who uses carbon disulfide? Instead, you can just use your benzene that you have lying around. White phosphorus dissolves quite well in benzene. So then if you take that some of that solution and put it on a piece of paper and leave it in the sun, the benzene will slowly evaporate, exposing the white phosphorus, which will then ignite. It's a lot less exciting than when you do it with carbon disulfide, but that's because carbon disulfide is really, really flammable and benzene is only sort of mildly flammable, I guess. But we can make the experiment a lot more exciting if we, instead of paper, we do it on a bed of chlorate. So chlorate is going to supply lots of oxygen. So when the benzene finally evaporates, it 
bursts into flames quite violently, which is good, but also when you do this with carbon disulfide, it actually detonates, like it goes full detonation. So, I thought I'd try again with a lot more white phosphorus benzene solution. And the whole mix just ignited straight away, which really made me think, well, fuck this, let's go do something else. I did something a little bit more dangerous, and that's <laughs> where we just fucked the solvent. Well, we didn't fuck the solvent, it's benzene. We ditched the solvent completely, and we put the lump of white phosphorus directly on a bed of chlorite. And then, we're trying to impact it to see if it explodes. It's worth pointing out that most, like, sort of flash powders, which is sort of equivalent to what we have here, generally need to be really finely divided and well mixed, and a good stoichiometric mix, before they even really have good energetic properties. And that's the complete opposite of what we have here. We just have a lump of white phosphorus sitting on top of a bed of oxidizer. Yet, the mix is so energetic that it still actually detonates. And it was very, very loud. I should have been wearing hearing protection, but I thought, no, oh, no, fuck, it's just white phosphorus, it'll be fine. Always wear the hearing protection, people. You don't need to know this, but I need to know this. This is a message to future me. Just fucking wear the hearing protection. All right, we've had some fire, we've had some explosions. Let's look at a wholesome property of white phosphorus for a change. And that's, it glows in the dark. Isn't that fun? The effect isn't all that bright. Uh, I've got my phone screen behind it on minimum brightness, just for comparison. And you can see my phone is kind of brighter than the white phosphorus glow. But the glow is still bright enough that if you walked into a dark room with it there, you could definitely pick it out and you would say, oh shit, what's that glowing thing? Probably, I don't, I don't know what you would normally say. That seems like a normal person reaction to fucking phosphorus. But you've got to be careful because you just have to leave it out in the air to see the glow. But it also ignites in air, so you can't really leave it too long. Otherwise, you'll have an uncontrolled phosphorus fire in the dark, which is, you know, the subject of my nightmares a lot of the time. So we go back to our original question. Does white phosphorus deserve its bad reputation? And my answer is undoubtedly so. It is horrible and it deserves a bad reputation 100%. Is YouTube going to delete this video? Undoubtedly, 100%, can't even monetize it. If I could, it wouldn't be monetized. But I hope you enjoyed this video. You can follow me on my subreddit. I don't have the link up, I'll just put it up in text. How the magic of video editing. I also have a Patreon, you can support me there. I'm obviously not getting any ad revenue and you know, these videos cost money to make and stuff. So feel free to support me on Patreon. Thank you to the people that have supported me. As per usual, um, yeah, check, check out my other content. Fucking the boxes. Don't fuck the boxes, but just like click on them, you know. Wow, clickbait. Fuck. I don't know.